Your average adult has anywhere between 20 and 30 trillion red blood cells circulating throughout their body at any given time. Inside each of these red blood cells, you'll find over 300 million copies of a protein called hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a protein that binds to and transports oxygen from our lungs to our cells. How does a red blood cell go about making millions and millions of hemoglobin proteins to transport oxygen? The instructions for building proteins like hemoglobin are found in our DNA. Within the nucleus of a eukaryotic cell resides DNA, a nucleic acid made of four different nucleotide monomers. Specific sequences of nucleotides in DNA code for proteins like hemoglobin. These sequences of nucleotides are called genes. The gene that codes for one of the subunits of the hemoglobin protein is a little over 1,600 nucleotides in length. Genes do not directly code for proteins, though. Instead, the expression of genes is a two-step process. The first step of gene expression is called transcription. During transcription, the gene is transcribed from DNA to RNA. Remember that RNA is a nucleic acid just like DNA. So the linear sequence of nucleotides in DNA can serve as a template for the RNA nucleotides. The product of transcription is an RNA copy of the gene called messenger RNA. During the second step of gene expression called translation, the sequence of nucleotides in the messenger RNA is translated into a sequence of amino acids. This forms a polypeptide chain. Let's take a quick look at how the process of gene expression occurs in a human red blood cell. In the nucleus of a human red blood cell, we find the gene that codes for one of the subunits of the hemoglobin protein. When oxygen levels fall, chemical signals trigger the expression of this gene. In this animation, you can see the process of transcription occurring. A blue molecule races along the DNA. It is RNA polymerase, an enzyme that reads the nucleotide sequence of the hemoglobin gene and uses it to build an RNA copy of the gene. The product of transcription, messenger RNA, is represented in this animation as a yellow chain emerging from the RNA polymerase. The RNA copy of the gene will now carry the instructions for building hemoglobin to the cytosol. In the cytosol, the second step of gene expression now occurs, translation. During translation, messenger RNA is fed through a ribosome, a large biomolecule made of protein and RNA represented here in blue. At the ribosome, the sequence of RNA nucleotides is translated into a chain of amino acids. The RNA nucleotides in messenger RNA are read in groups of three, called a codon. Each codon codes for one of the 20 amino acids. So as messenger RNA moves through the ribosome, it provides the code to add amino acids to the growing polypeptide chain one at a time in an order that is determined by the codons on the messenger RNA. What happens to this polypeptide chain? It will fold, taking on a three-dimensional shape that will become one of the subunits in a hemoglobin protein. Once the hemoglobin protein is completely synthesized, it is ready to go to work, carrying oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body. Like hemoglobin, all of the proteins synthesized by our cells are products of gene expression. So as you begin to study the details of gene expression, don't forget the big picture. Genetic information flows from DNA to RNA during the process of transcription, and from RNA to protein during the process of translation.